here and welcome back to Springwood. Today's episode, we're going to be building a water treatment facility. This is, would you believe, the first and only water treatment facility in Springwood, which is um pretty crazy considering this is like a full-blown city and we've been building it for about a year. Like, it's, it's kind of dawned on me that we're lacking a whole bunch of different facilities kind of serving Springwood. We don't have a tip, we don't have water treatment, we don't have a power station. There's a whole bunch of different things that we're totally lacking. We've been building the airports over the last few episodes and I had this little awkward spot that I was kind of thinking I'd turn into like an industrial center with lots of warehouses, you know, maybe some sort of oil facility or, you know, something along those lines. It kind of only dawned on me when I was floating around LA particularly LAX and I noticed that down near LAX there is actually a water treatment facility and like it kind of seemed the most fitting place to put it you know seeing as LA actually has one right next to their airport and Springwood actually doesn't even have the water treatment spot so um you know it kind of just seemed like the right thing to do so um was pretty keen to plop it down and made a lot of sense I am um, I don't really know how these facilities work. I mean, I was kind of guessing off the images and, um, you know, I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between uh, this facility and the time lapse that you're watching right now because I did want to kind of make it as accurate as possible but at the same time, you know, the more the more you effort you put into making these things as realistic as possible, the less you really do build. Um, the Springwood's like a good mix between accuracy and just getting the job done. <laughs> I kind of miss out on some serious details, uh, as you probably noticed throughout the airport. But you know, like in terms of trying to get that balance, I think I think we're kind of heading in the right direction. Um, First, um, I'm going to start by building um, like the office office complex um, that's going to greet people as they enter uh, this facility. The reason why I'm doing this is like noticing on uh, the one down in LA. By the way, I don't know the name of this facility. Like, please hit me up in the comments. The first thing they see is going to be the office block. I mean, this is where reception is. This is where most of the paperwork side of things happens. I wanted to like establish an area that's going to um, you know operate in, in the same sort of sense um, where most of most people are going to be entering this is the, going to be the first thing that they see I also wanted it to be somewhat nice I mean most entrances to places are super flash and super nice and then behind the scenes it's quite uh, you know it's where workers work they don't really care what we look at and I wanted just there'd be lots of gardens and good parking lots and then as the facility kind of grew and got bigger then it kind of got into the more industrial side of things and I really wanted it to have that look of wear and tear a bit dirty underneath the surface definitely behind the areas where people are going to see the most plus this is pretty close to the airport so it's we're gonna get a lot of traffic coming uh, between uh, the two sides of the facility uh, by the way like it, in terms of whereabouts it is it's it's in a really really cool spot it's um in an area where the city has been sprawling for ages and now it's pretty much just stopping at this one area so it sits on the fringes of Springwood and the greater region uh, it, 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 it's one of those places where um where you'd usually find these sort of uh, areas uh, these sort of facilities you know, the airport's out this way, it takes up plenty of space, it's a good barrier, it's a good stop for the, the sprawl of the city, and then the, you know, the rest of the Springwood region, I guess. And um, because this thing does take up a lot of space, they're generally out of the city, they're not really in areas like downtowns or even close. You know, that is one of the trickiest parts about building in a city skylines. I mean, it's not so hard in Springwood because it is such a big sprawling city but you know if you are going to make a city in, in um, city skylines and want it to be really realistic it's really hard to kind of get that realism because like I was saying these sort of areas sit far away from the downtown so you need to kind of have a really big city if you want it to look super realistic because like I know that when I was first up building in um, city skylines before Springwood I was always annoyed because my cities would always feel really small even though 
I was trying to go for super large. I mean, it's only now that Springwood is actually starting to feel to me like a proper city because we now have like giant sprawling suburbs and these things sit on the fringe of the city and downtown's like an actual old place. Whereas these sort of areas are a little bit more, wouldn't say modern, but really haven't been there since the very beginning of the establishment of the city, I'm trying to say. Um, back to what I'm building and I'm noticing that there needs to be a lot of areas to park because these sort of areas, these sort of facilities hold a lot of people, they've got a lot of workers, they need more than just uh, the standard car places, uh, car spots, you need a garage, you need a uh, you know, a, a multi-story car park. So stuck one of these down. I've been wanting to plot this one down for ages. I think it looks terrible, which is great because <laughs> I think garages are pretty awful. Uh, they're not exactly the cleanest and the best looking places. This one looks awesome. Like it's really well textured and I wanted it to be a bit of an eyesore, you know, around this area. I didn't want it to be a pretty little part of this, um, of this spot. Pretty much this entire area is a bit of an eyesore, and that's what I really wanted. I did, I, as you can see, the grass is not, it's not green, it's, there's barely any grass, it's mostly sand, and mostly desert. I wanted it, um, I wanted it to be pretty rough around the edges, definitely not clean. And, um, you know, because I've been building the spring for so long, it's really easy to actually establish places like that, because I know the formula, I know how these areas work. Uh, I know how to build the grind because I've built it already um, in so many other industrial areas in Springwood, which is really cool. So we're now getting into the nitty gritty of how this facility is going to work. And um, I've kind of just tried to base it totally off uh, the one in LA because I didn't want to go into huge amounts of effort to figure out how <laughs> these facilities actually work. Because I mean, once you start, you really can't stop and then you just end up hating what you build because you just know it's not going to be as accurate as it could be. So, in saying that, it was um, important that I just tried to incorporate the things that I knew that I could probably uh, pull off within City Skylines. So, for instance, when plopping down these turbines, I wanted them to be grouped all together. I wanted there to be a road access um, to, to all of them. Like, I didn't want them to be in a spot where they wouldn't be able to access the road. Also notice that there's little little buildings in between, uh, like a whole bunch of them, looks like between uh, four uh, of these turbines, so I knew that I needed to incorporate something like that. Um, other things that I knew that I wanted is there's these flat sort of office areas, they're well, not offices, they're probably some sort of um, facility that I wanted to incorporate somehow. There are a bunch of different offices, lots of other industrial areas that I just could not figure out what the hell they were doing, but I knew that I wanted them in there. These, um, these like cylinders, I think, like I've got no idea what they are, but I knew that I could probably pull them off using the containers that I already have that I, that usually hold the oil, but I think that if by adding a couple of uh, other bits and pieces to them like props that I can actually pull that off. There's a lot of giant actual buildings that I knew that I could use some of the warehouses that I already have to do that and to really make this whole area look particularly watery <laughs> just add a lot of pipes and a lot of uh, puddles as well and just anything that I could get my hands on within City of Skylines that would help create that because Trying to get that realism in this game without going into just crazy amounts of research, you know, you just, you do have to just draw the line and figure out what things can I incorporate, what things can't I, and just um, knuckle down and get it done. And you know, kind of like a job, you know, you don't, you don't want to, um, well, I know that when I'm building, because I've got this channel, because I kind of have these sort of expectations on myself that I want to release every week. Uh, like, I, there's there's only so much realism and detail you can kind of get yourself into, so, um, you know, I do like the system that I got going, just um, winging it, and I also really love it when you guys sort of hit me up in the comments and say, oh, hey man, like, totally add this there and that'll just change everything, and, you know, I do that because without your help, I 
this spring will just be a, will just be a sprawling mess of inaccuracies and um, you know it's great that I can actually upload and get your opinions on it because there's a lot of people out there that actually know what the hell I'm building and um, know what I'm looking at on Google Earth and thanks so much for all that that's been really really cool I've um, now placed down all those turbines in those little areas as you can see those uh, all of them are accessed by uh, roads which is um, something that I really wanted to do. I also wanted to have quite a lot of pipelines going around, even though there's not tons that I can notice on Google Earth, but I um, you know, I figured that would make it look particularly watery. <laughs> so I figured I'd just do that. Um, a lot of these assets that I'm using are actually vanilla assets. You can find them just within the vanilla game. Uh, I'm a massive fan of doing that because it just, I, I, I like the challenge. I like trying to, trying just to use things that I already have rather than constantly downloading. Mind you, like Springwood is full of custom assets that I download still. However, you know, in terms of how big I'm going, it's like it it does the trick. Um, so, for instance, you can see quite a lot of different vanilla assets that I've plopped down. I noticed that. Quite a lot of people on Twitter were surprised that my last Osirian build had some vanilla hotels in them because they did look really good. They look so good and particularly if you use them with props, even vanilla props that you download, just use more beautification, more beautification, beautification mod and um, you know you can really make those vanilla props just look totally awesome. Um, my go-to filler with these areas are containers. As you can see, I didn't really know what to do in that spot just there, so just plop down a couple of lines of shipping containers and voila, you have a totally filled gap. And it looks legit, <laughs> even though shipping containers probably aren't. The first thing you notice within an area like this, um, some a, a thing that I really like about this area is the gap between the road and the facility. I really like that dried up look this fence that I'm dragging along here it's a prison fence I really wanted it to be high high security around these areas because it is somewhat of a dangerous area and um, using a, a group of trees that I've been using for quite a while now um, this group of trees is uh, this bush well there's three types of bushes like a large one which isn't actually it's just a bit smaller than a tree um, a medium sized one than a small one and I've been finding that to be a really good uh, system in terms of like filling gaps. I um, Big trees are great but then they can actually then create the look of a forest or a jungle whereas like I'm trying to go for more of a city look rather than that and um, using those shrubs just I don't know to feel like it just they're so much smaller and they add heaps and they still make it look like there's um, little bits of detail. This little factory that I'm doing here, I kind of want it to look abandoned. Like an old part of the factory and rather than demolishing it, they've just sort of poorly guarded it up and um, left it to rust in the corner. Um, I really love creating those little parts of history within Springwood. It's, um, you know, in er little areas like that, I think uh, my biggest thrill when building this city is those little details that you probably wouldn't really notice and it's only once I'm actually building you know I don't actively think about that when I'm you know kind of building these areas I it's not until I find the asset or the prop that I um, scroll past using find it and then I um, go like ah oh, you know that's a cool little barrier I can stick down there and then when I start putting it down I'm like oh, that's totally an abandoned building that I've just left in the corner to rust you know, like, <laughs> don't, I, so often I'm just building and then, um, and then I come up with the story afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm basically filling these areas with lots of industrious uh, buildings, warehouses, factories, a big mix between vanilla and custom uh, workshop items. I'm also filling lots of gaps with, like, probably like more oil sort of stuff. However, I think it's I think it fits for the water theme. I um Yeah, I mean there's probably way better assets like that on the workshop. But I mean if this is gonna be my only water facility, uh, you just you just have to make do. It um, makes a lot more sense. 
these distribution uh, centers that I'm plopping down, I wanted them to act as if they were the uh, those flat roof areas that were next to the turbines. Although they're kind of far away from the turbines now, I still think that they have very similar a similar feel to those um, things that we're looking at. I I have no idea what they do or what their purpose is, but plopping it down just here kind of makes me um, feel like I've I've taken that into consideration, and at least it's sort of in the city somewhere. I um just leaving them by themselves didn't look quite right, so I wanted them to be paired up with some sort of lower elements, maybe some pipes. I needed just something extra on top of it. I just they just didn't look right by themselves. Um, there's like my go-to vanilla building that I just used to cut into those buildings that I, I think they look they look really really cool they're really nice it's like a really nice building that's got quite a lot of detail lots of pipes running through it um, it's it's one of the more realistic industrial vanilla buildings that's on uh, the city skyline so I do use it a lot you'll see it all the time it's not just in this area it's often spliced into many of my industrial areas that I um, place down. Um, it can be used so so nicely in just any area and I highly recommend just checking out those vanilla assets. I mean if you're wondering what I'm using, I do have a mods and asset list. It's in the description below if you want to um, check it out and um, you know you'll find those mods down there. But basically using find it and move it and plot the growables are the most important mods to be using right now because they do give you that access to find what building you want to use, plop it down without it complaining and then just move it, rotate it, cut it into another building, do whatever you want with it. It's, um, those, three, those three mods are just the best. At the moment I'm, because this area is really it's really close to the ocean. It's really close to the waterline. I feel like that was quite unsafe for such a important facility like this. So I ended up making this break wall that would protect the facility and is also an area that would uh, stop a lot of noise. And even the general look of this area is not quite pleasant. So there's, it's quite multi-purposed and it's really just a mound of dirt and soil that's just been placed there. And I, I actually got the idea from uh, the one in LA where there is this wall that breaks the facility and the houses nearby, like the, the nearby suburb. I actually really like it and I wanted to incorporate something like that. I figured close to the water would give me that opportunity totally did so that was kind of cool and um, it's actually became one of the highlights of this build it just was such a simple and easy thing but I really like it and I kind of want to create more man-made soil based walls <laughs> yeah you know what I mean but I really liked it this side of the facility is where those big tubs are I don't know what these big tubs are but I think they might be used to hold water. Ugh, I don't know, but they're cool. And I couldn't actually, I really wanted to find almost the exact same ones on the workshop. I thought I could, but I really, there's just nothing. I, I could not find anything similar. And particularly, well, I, I searched everywhere. I could not find it. However, these ones by Vanya are really nice and they just, they fit the, they'll serve the purpose until something else kind of shoots up. I mean, let me know. I think they're, I think they're totally fine, but I would be willing to go to a bit more work or just to replace them if I did find something that was the perfect fit. I, I did try to drag a couple of pipes and stuff over the top of them to just change the look a little bit, but the, uh, the pipes were causing me all sorts of grief. I mean, the, so I was using about three different pipes. I was using one by Beard Monkey. Um, he made some for Asara for us and I really like them. I used them a bunch. I also used this thinner pipe that um, I can't remember who created it, but it's also really nice. And then there's this oil one that's I, I, it's a building and when you plop it down, you can kind of place it in a line. It contours with the line, which is cool, with the line, with the ground, which is cool. However, it's, I couldn't delete it. Like it. As soon as I'd place one down, uh, 
half the time you could delete it and then the other half it just would stay there and um, even using move it I couldn't delete it so you might find a couple of rogue pipes pipelines just sort of shooting across the road I, I couldn't delete it. I had no idea what was going on with it it's um, they're, they're still there there's still just random pipes that are sort of floating around I try to cover them up with buildings but I mean you'll see me short, shortly just struggle with them it um yeah I had no idea what I was gonna do with them but yeah look there's that there it is there's that pipe right there just sit in there undeletable it's yeah I don't know but I did try to add uh, drag that over the Yavanya tanks but they just it just didn't work so which is a bit unfortunate however they do look pretty cool by themselves I am um, the cinematics at the end are really 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 nice uh, particularly because the airport is so close to this area and you do see all these planes sort of flying overhead and taxiing you around the runways it's it's a really really fun area to be working in and to be creating lots of cinematics I reckon we're gonna stick in this area for the next 10 episodes which feels like a lot but I mean considering how much there is around this particular spot there's um so many opportunities to be building neighborhoods and outer skirts and more facilities like this I mean we do not have anything in terms of rubbish and power oh we, actually to be actually no I'll take it back second episode I ever did was the uh, the only power station that actually generates any power in Springwood and that's the wind turbine farm uh, but like there's there's not that many turbines up there and Springwood's so damn huge that it just does not power enough stuff so um you know definitely need some sort of coal power station and I was actually really really close to be putting in a power station instead of this uh, water facility but I um I, I kind of wanted just to hold out a little bit longer to build the power station uh, let me know what you think but I'm got leaning in the direction of building coal like a coal power station whoa whoa, whoa actually no 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 no. that was my old thought <laughs> I'm actually not thinking about that in in the LA region most of the power comes from a natural gas uh, facility that is pretty far away from the actual city I um I want to build something pretty similar it won't be until I actually build the outskirts of Springwoods that I will do that but let me know if you want to sit a little bit closer I, I I could be persuaded and um but yeah I'm thinking natural gas I, yeah I think it'd be really really cool uh, back to what I'm doing on screen though and I'm now using lots of little assets that I'm finding using find it just um just to kind of like fill some of the gaps around these sort of areas and to also have a bit of a destination for some of these pipes I didn't really want these pipes just to look like they go to nowhere they need to sort of go to some sort of outlet um, I didn't also want heaps of these massive buildings that I'm popping down right now so you can you saw me early just place down a couple of like little holding areas for um, the end of the pipes and I for me I sort of imagine that they get taken to these uh, little facilities little spots and something happens there and then it goes somewhere else like they're just like little areas little holding spots right now I'm actually building uh, an area a spot where basically the water then gets pumped into the city this is that area it doesn't get flushed into the water this system goes towards the city and then goes like will hits the um, the pipeline underneath the water so that's what this little spot is for it's great because it actually heads in the direction of the main city part um, which is really really cool and um, you know something else that I've noticed within um, you know this facility in LA there is actually a pipe that leads out of the facility and I figured that would make a really cool addition to my one but yeah I mean that is pretty much it for the, the actual facility I mean now I'm basically just filling in gaps and working on a couple of outer area things I mean the facility looks like it's the perfect fit for this area I think uh, in terms of what I was gonna plop down here it's uh, it's good <laughs> like I, I don't think I could have placed down anything else really uh, I don't think it would interfere with the actual airport whereas I think a power station probably would you know there's a couple of other things I don't think I could have plopped down in this area and 
it is at a weird, awkward shape. And I think in terms of what I can actually stick in a spot like this, I think a facility like this really, really works. For the last little part of the episode, I'm detailing just a little mountain, a little hillside, just to add to um, the plane spotting part of um, this area. When I was floating around LA, LAX, I noticed this little uh, plane spotting spot above this mountain and I thought that was really cool and I knew that I could probably fit in something really similar in uh, Springwood. So this little spot here, I decided to turn, in, turn it into a bit of a nature walk. You know, something else that I noticed about LA is that there are actually heaps of trails around, like for a massive sprawling city, there seems to be a lot of places where people can go for a hike. So I figured it would be really cool to start incorporating more places like that with lots around Mount uh, Springwoods. So I've got a few up there, but I'd like to be placing a couple of other extra spots where people can go for a hike. Um, this little spot's really nice. I think it's like a cool spot in terms of where people could actually go for a walk, not just plane spotters, but people who are trying to find interesting areas within the city. I mean, you get like a really cool view of the skyline of um, Springwood. You also get some nature areas, you get some suburbs, and you get this cool spot to watch planes. And, um, you know, it'd take like half an hour, 45 minutes to walk up there. <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, it's, it's fun to think about this sort of shit. But um, I do really love thinking about Springwood in terms of a city where you can actually visit and do stuff in. That's kind of been the plan from, um, you know, day one of planning Springwood and starting this series is, you know, getting into a series, getting into a city where I can actually develop lots of the backstories and um, get you guys to jump on board with that. So, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. But hey, that is um, it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. And um, I'll be back on your screens next week with another episode. So I've already built it. It's damn good. So stick around for that. It's... Um, yeah, something to look forward to. But until then, have a great week and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.